In Iraq, a group of American soldiers is traveling by truck in the middle of the night. The driver Bart is distracted by his fellow soldiers and ends up hitting a child on the road. When he gets out of the car to check on the kid, he discovers it was all a trap. An ambush is waiting for him and quickly shoots him in the head. Days later, Bart is given a hero's funeral in the USA. His whole family is there, plus his girlfriend Janet, his best friend Joey, and his friend Matilda. However, they don't finish the burying process that day because the excavator runs out of gas. After the funeral, the three friends go to a bar to drink in Bart's memory. Janet is worried that Bart had gone to war to avoid her because he never said he loved her, but Joey swears that wasn't the case. Bart loved Janet very much, and he had even asked Joey's help in choosing rings. This makes Janet even sadder, so she rushes out of the building to cry alone, but Joey follows her to comfort her. Thinking things can't get worse, they end up kissing and spending the night together. Meanwhile in the cemetery, Bart wakes up in his coffin as if nothing had happened. Thanks to the grave still being uncovered, he manages to climb out without issues, and he makes his way into the mortician's building. When he turns on the lights and gets to see himself in the mirror, he's shocked to see what has happened to him. His body is decomposing and his eyes are all white. His mouth has also been sewn for the funeral, so he uses a pair of scissors to free it before freaking out at the current situation. After admitting to himself that this isn't a dream, Bart goes to see Joey, who hits him on the head with a bat because at first the thinks this is a prank. Bart convinces him he's the real deal and explains he isn't feeling very well, so Joey tries to feed him. Unfortunately, alcohol and pizza are a bad choice, and Bart ends up throwing up all over the rug. They decide Bart should go to the hospital, and they use sunglasses to cover his weird eyes. When a doctor checks on him, she's wary to come closer, and she completely freaks out when he reveals the autopsy scars. In the waiting room, Joey suddenly hears an alarm ringing and the staff causing a ruckus, apparently calling the police as well, so he rushes to get Bart out of there. By the time they come back to Joey's apartment, the sun is already rising and Bart passes out on the floor. A few hours later, Joey calls Matilda because she's a nurse and asks her to come to take a look at Bart. After promising not to tell anybody about it until they figure out what's going on, Matilda checks Bart's vitals and declares him dead, or more correctly, undead. She's sure Bart has become something like a vampire and will wake up again at night, so Joey should kill him properly before he starts attacking innocents. The only techniques that could work are a stake to the heart and removing the head, but Joey doesn't believe the supernatural exists and ignores Matilda's warnings as she leaves. When night falls, Matilda's prediction comes true and Bart wakes up. Joey cooks his favorite dish for him, but Bart just throws up again. Seeing as they have no other choice, they decide to follow the legends, and Joey drives Bart to the hospital, where he sneaks into the lab to steal some blood bags. Unfortunately, a nurse finds him, so Bart has to use the weapon he's brought with him to make her collaborate. The nurse puts the blood packages in Bart's bag and when he gets distracted for a second, she tries to fight to get the bag away from him, and the struggle causes Bart to lose the sunglasses. The sight of the freaky eyes scares the nurse and she steps back, giving Bart the chance to retrieve his bag with the blood before running away. Back in Joey's car, Bart drinks the blood, which helps his skin stop decomposing. Afterward, the friends spend the whole night out, drinking in different bars and flirting with girls. This is already more fun than they used to have when Bart was alive, and he thinks he's been given a second chance at life. When morning comes, Bart passes out again and Joey has to carry him back to his apartment. The next night, once Bart is awake again, they experiment a bit with the objects from Legends, but neither a cross nor holy water hurt him. Joey can't decide if Bart is a zombie or a vampire, so in the end he decides to call him a revenant. There's no cure for an outside actually killing Bart, but since he's in pain again, they need to do something to keep him fed. The friends decide to go for a ride and try to approach various tramps with signs that say they'll work for food, but it turns out those signs are just for show and they prefer to have just the money. Joey thinks maybe Bart should take their blood by force because nobody will miss them, but Bart refuses to kill anyone. Their next stop is the store to get some drinks, and after Bart throws up again, they're approached by a man concerned about Bart's health. However he's just pretending, he's actually a mugger that takes a gun out as soon as he comes closer. Bart tries to stop him and gets shot in the struggle, but he just gets up again because bullets do nothing to him. The mugger freaks out and begins repeatedly shooting Bart, thus Joey takes the chance to approach him from behind and knock him out. Now they need to leave before the police find them, and Joey convinces Bart to take the body with them in the car so he can feed. Bart is hesitant at first, but soon he gives into his hunger, and once he's done with the body, they wrap it up and throw it in the ocean. Joey thinks they should have used more rocks, and Bart decides to keep the mugger's gun. The next day, while Bart is unconscious, Janet and Matilda show up at Joey's apartment. The cops finally discovered Bart's body was missing and called Janet, so Matilda told her what's going on. After Joey confirms Bart's fine because he's fed, Matilda brings up again the idea of killing him before he becomes too dangerous, but Janet doesn't want to lose her boyfriend again. She kicks Matilda out, then lies down next to Bart to wait for him to wake up. When night falls, the couple reunites with a hug. Afterward, Joey and Bart go out for drinks, and they enter a store that is in the middle of getting robbed. Because of his powers, Bart is fearless, so he takes out his gun, and he and the robber end up shooting each other at the same time. Joey takes the dead robber's gun, happy dust, and wallet, and Bart feeds on the body while the clerk thanks them for saving his life by giving them the items they'd chosen for free. 
A similar situation happens soon after. They find a man being robbed at the ATM, thus Bart kills the criminal and feeds on it while the victim gets to run away safely. The store clerk they help later appears in the news, and the reporter calls the friends the vigilante gunslingers. Joey is very excited about this, feeling like they've become superheroes, and wishes Bart would give him the dark gift too. However Bart refuses, because being undead isn't as fun as it sounds. The following night, Bart tries to stop a group of thieves from robbing a liquor store. Joey thinks his friend is in danger and tries to help, only to get shot in the process. Desperate, Bart tries to take Joey to the hospital, but Joey dies on the way there, so Bart has no choice but to feed on him before taking him back to the apartment. A few hours later, Joey wakes up as a revenant as well. The friends realize criminals are the perfect food for them, they don't feel guilty for killing them, and this way they make the city a safer place. They begin driving around every night, finding crimes to be stopped. Confident in their abilities, they approach the criminals, kill them with a bullet or two, then feed on the bodies before taking their money, weapons, and any illegal substances. Once they're done, they throw the bodies in the river. A variety of newscasts soon begin covering the story, and because they're incredibly grateful, the people they've helped never mention their eating habits. One night, the police manage to get Joey's car on the security camera, and Matilda immediately recognizes it. The following evening, she decides to follow the boys into their next criminal destination, a storehouse where a group of men is handling a huge amount of happy dust. The friends don't hesitate to kill them all, but Bart begins to have regrets when he discovers they were cops. However Joey doesn't agree, he points out that what these men were doing here was corrupt work, so it's a good thing they're dead. Matilda hears all this and records it on her phone before revealing herself to ask them to surrender or she'll go to the cops. Bart isn't sure what to do because he wants to protect Janet, but Bart doesn't hesitate to shoot Matilda even if she's their old friend. Before dying though, Matilda gets to send the recording to Janet. Afraid the cops will find them too, Joey sends Bart back to their place to pack as many things as possible while he makes some special arrangements. But when Bart arrives at the apartment, an upset Janet is already there, waiting for him after hearing Matilda's recording. Bart explains he can't keep on living if he doesn't drink blood, so Janet offers herself to avoid any more killings. Thinking this may be the perfect solution, Bart begins enthusiastically drinking from Janet's arm. Moments later, Joey shows up with a white hearse, two coffins in the back, and the bags of happy dust he took from the dead cops. He wants to escape to Las Vegas, where they can have lots of fun during the night and sleep in the coffins inside the car during the day. Before they decide anything though, Bart comes clean and reveals he accidentally killed Janet because he lost control while feeding on her. Furious, Joey insults Bart for what he did and asks him to remove the head so she doesn't end in this miserable life like them, but since Bart hesitates, Joey taunts him by confessing he spent a night with Janet. The friends begin to argue and take out their guns to shoot each other until they run out of bullets, but Joey has access to another weapon and uses it to shoot Bart away before leaving for Las Vegas alone. Afterward, Bart decides to do the right thing and throws Janet in the river by putting her body and her head in different bags. The police find him red-handed and arrest him, so morning comes while Bart is in a prison cell. Meanwhile, Joey is kidnapped by a group of gangsters that takes him to meet Bart's first victim, who has become a revenant as well and was able to leave the river because the friends didn't use enough rocks. The mugger wants to teach Bart a lesson for what he did to him, and in order to do that, he introduces Joey to his chainsaw. The following night, Bart wakes up in the autopsy lab because the cops had thought he was dead. After scaring away the forensic examiner, Bart escapes and returns to the apartment, where he finds a box waiting for him with Joey's head. It's still alive, but it can barely speak, so Bart uses a private toy to help with the vibrations in his throat. Joey explains what happened and asks Bart to end his suffering, which Bart accepts. The friends go to an abandoned plot, and Bart tells Joey that he loves him platonically before running him over with a bulldoze. Afterward, Bart tries to end things in different ways but none of them work. His next try is the subway rails, but that doesn't work either, and he ends up boarding the train instead. When a woman comes closer to check on him, he can't control his hunger anymore and jumps on her to eat. Bart is discovered when the train stops at the next station, so he runs through the crowd, trying to escape as he pushes guards away. The police are already waiting for him outside and they don't hesitate to shoot him and every civilian coming out of the building, but this is still not enough to stop Bart. Ignoring all the bullets piercing his body, he rushes through the officers and runs away from the city until he reaches a nearby hill where he waits for sunrise. Once he falls unconscious, a group of men in hazmat suits comes to pick Bart up. The next time Bart wakes up, he's inside a glass container surrounded by other people like him. A scientist is offering a tour for various military personnel, explaining they haven't found any genetic, viral, or bacterial explanation for this, but Bart is most likely the alpha infection subject. When a general learns that Bart used to be in the army, he tells him he'll have an advantage. Moments later, all the revenants are airdropped in big canisters in the middle of Iran. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.